The zombie virus suddenly erupted in the school. Two sisters, who had promised to be good friends for life, were holding hands, but one of them was dragged down the stairs by a zombie while the other kicked her away. Meanwhile, Koro skipped classes as usual to relax on the rooftop, feeling down about his crush being with someone else. Just then, a suspicious person began banging on the school gate. However, in response to the teacher's warning, he remained unmoved. The PE teacher went up and grabbed the collar of the person. But the next moment, he was bitten on the other side of his arm. Then, the physical education teacher fell to the ground. Just as the crowd was about to check, the PE teacher, who had lost his vital signs, suddenly opened his eyes and grabbed the beautiful teacher, biting her neck. Observing this, Koro appeared to have a premonition of what was to come and quickly ran back to the classroom, grabbed his crush, and prepared to escape. Due to Koro's inexplicable behavior, Ray thought he was going crazy again. Surprisingly, Koro slapped Ray and forcibly took her away. They broke the mop and turned it into a makeshift weapon. Suddenly, the broadcast reported a violent incident on campus and ordered all students to evacuate immediately. Then there were screams on the radio. As the chaos began, countless students rushed to the door. On the other side, Koro and the others decided to head to the rooftop to avoid being trampled. But unfortunately, they encountered the infected. Faced with the incoming zombie, Ray was so scared that he kept retreating, but inspired by the inho, she grabbed the modified long stick directly into the heart of the zombie. But when they were relieved, they didn't expect zombie to lunge again. In a hurry, Ray was forced to retreat to the corner. Inho saw this and immediately went to pull the zombie away. But what I didn't expect was, zombie's head turned 180 degrees and bit him in the shoulder. No matter how Ray attacked, but cannot pull zombie away, Ray screamed desperately for Komoro's help, and he bravely took up a baseball bat and smashed the zombie's skull. Zombie was finally put down. They also discovered that, only by attacking the head of the zombie, to eliminate them completely. Soon, the three of them reached the top of the building. They saw that the city below was already in chaos. And the playground, it has become a zombie paradise. Some people were bitten alive, while others even suffered mental breakdowns, and jumped off the building directly. Just as they were stunned, a large number of zombies had already attacked. They had to run towards the observatory. They used tables and chairs to block the staircase, temporarily blocked the zombie outside. However, at this moment, Inho suddenly coughed up blood and turned into a zombie. As he approached them slowly, Komoro, in order to protect Rei, he took out his weapon and killed him with determination. However, afterwards, Rei blamed Komoro instead, asking if he killed Inho because she liked him. Hearing this, Komoro's heart was completely hurt. He decided to leave the rooftop, join the horde of zombies in death. But the next second, Rei suddenly hugged his arm crying and saying that what she said earlier was not sincere, and begged him not to leave her alone. After a brief period of sadness, Ray decided to call her father, who was a police officer, to inquire about what was happening. After waiting for a long time, the call finally went through, but there were gunshots coming from the other side. As her father's voice came through, he said that the entire city had fallen into panic and urged them to leave as soon as possible. However, before he could finish speaking, the signal was completely cut off. Just as they were at a loss, countless zombies are slowly approaching them. However, trapped in the observatory, they faced a new challenge. As the number of zombies increases, the tables and chairs blocking the stairs will soon break through. If they didn't escape soon, death will be waiting for them. Koro quickly pulled out the hose and asked Ray to turn on the switch. In an instant, strong water pressure was released. After the impact of the high-pressure water gun, the zombies were successfully dispersed. But in order to escape from the school, they had to navigate through floors filled with zombies. So they decided to first find surviving classmates and then unite to leave together. Meanwhile, at the school infirmary, the zombie group broke through the glass, attacked the male students and female school nurse. In an instant, the male student was surrounded by zombies. In his final moments, he tried to urge the female nurse to escape, but she was too scared and froze in place. As the zombies approached, at this critical juncture, a female student with a wooden sword appeared and quickly killed the zombies. This purple-haired girl's name is Siko, the captain of the school's kendo club. 
She came to the injured male student, and at his request, Siko killed him, but just then, more zombies arrived from outside. However, Siko was not afraid and even showed a bloodthirsty grin. They quickly took care of the zombies in front of them. Then they headed to the teacher's office. Whenever a zombie attacks, Siko could easily repel them with just one strike. Meanwhile, upstairs, Hirano and Saya cautiously went to the tool room. As a military enthusiast, Hirano immediately noticed the nailed gun on the table. But just then, more and more zombies gathered outside the door. Saya urged Hirano to hurry and find a way to kill them, but Hirano was acting possessed. Not paying attention to Saya's words, but constantly modifying the nailed gun in his hand. After being constantly hit by the zombies, the door was finally broken open, facing the zombies rushing in. Hirano picked up the modified nailed gun in his hand, and started shooting at the zombies. As the zombie group was repelled, they quickly exited the room. Meanwhile, Saya tested the zombies by throwing towels at them, and finally concluded that zombies are very sensitive to sound. They lack vision and smell, but as they were discussing countermeasures, more zombies emerged from behind. But at the critical moment, Hirano's modified gun ran out of bullets. As the zombies got closer and closer, Saya had to use nearby objects to keep attacking the zombies. But this could not stop zombies. When Kouro and the others arrived, Saya was performing a lobotomy on a zombie. So everyone picked up weapons and launched an attack on the zombies. All the zombies have been eliminated. Saya was scared and fell to the ground. She was looking at herself covered in blood. Saya lowered her proud posture. Finally, let out a cry. They arrived at an office and learned from the TV that the world is now overrun with zombies. Given the current situation, they realized the seriousness of the situation. After discussing it together, the most hopeful solution was to find a large car and drive through the zombie horde directly. And in the office, there was a key to a bus. They only had to pass through the dense zombie group. As the door opened, they worked together and quickly ran towards the parking lot. But with a scream, they were drawn to a group of students surrounded by zombies. At the stairway, they were about to die there. But at a critical moment, Koro's team arrived and rescued them. After eliminating the zombies, Koro invited them to escape together. However, a new problem arose. Due to the overwhelming number of zombies, if they broke through without guidance, they would surely be wiped out. But if they could lure all the zombies away with sound, they can easily exit the gate. However, someone had to take risks and venture out to create sound. So Koro volunteered, slowly walking towards the zombie horde. On campus, students were frantically fleeing as numerous students were bitten and killed by zombies. Surviving student Komoro and his team bravely fought and tried to break through the zombie horde. But one of the boys was surrounded by zombies. The sound of screaming echoed throughout the campus. When the girl who was running away saw her boyfriend being eaten by the zombie swarm, despite Saya's advice to stay away, she rushed towards the zombies. She wanted to die with her lover. Finally, Koro and their group reached the bus, where the school nurse Shizuka immediately started the engine. Just as the car door was about to close, a group of survivors suddenly emerged from a distance. At that moment, Siko said that it was Wisteria Sensei. But Rei's face suddenly turned pale when she heard the name. Koro told Shizuka to wait for the group to get in the car before driving. But Rei told him not to wait for Wisteria and that he should die instead. Koro was puzzled by Rei's unusual behavior. Meanwhile, under the leadership of Wisteria, more and more students boarded the bus safely. But just as he was about to get on the bus, a student ran towards him from afar. He fell directly in front of him because he was going too fast. The student said he broke his foot and asked Wisteria to help him. However, Wisteria kicked him in the face, stating that people without strength had no value in surviving. Shizuka drove the bus out of the school, they finally managed to escape from the school filled with zombies. At this time, a zombie was about to enter a convenience store, but the clerk was listening to music and completely unaware of the danger, Koro's team happened to drive by the store and ran over the zombie, instantly killing it. The group of people in the car were arguing about where to find a safe place. They almost got into a fight about it. Ray knocked one of them to the ground. Wisteria walked over, clapping in approval, 
praising Ray for ending the dispute and stating that they needed a leader to guide the team. As the only teacher in the group, Wisteria volunteered to be the leader, and almost everyone agreed with the proposal. However, Ray strongly resisted and even jumped off the bus by herself. Koro was worried and followed her. Although he didn't know why Ray hated Wisteria so much, he hoped that she could endure it for a little longer since walking was too dangerous. Suddenly, an out-of-control bus came with countless zombies crawling inside. Finally, it crashed into a car on the side of the road and flipped over. Koro saved Ray in time. Although the two were not seriously injured, the road was blocked by the burning car, with zombies constantly emerging from it. Koro and Siko agreed to meet at the East Police Station at 7 p.m. M. After that, Siko went back to the car and asked the school nurse, Shizuka, to find another way. Koro and Ray also made it out in time. They were about to take a break. A zombie with a helmet pounced on them. As Koro blocked the zombie's attack, Ray picked up a brick and smashed it on the zombie's head. Knocking it down, they breathed a sigh of relief. The once bustling and prosperous streets were now empty, with bodies and destroyed vehicles everywhere. They found a police car, but the police inside were already dead. Ray checked and found a handgun, but unfortunately, there were only five bullets in the gun. In this post-apocalyptic world, each bullet was precious. At that moment, Ray handed Komoro five bloody bullets. She had taken them from the severed hand of another police officer. With the gun in hand, they continued forward. They arrived at a gas station and wanted to refuel their motorcycles, but the self-service machine required money, which they didn't have. Koro went inside the gas station to find some money. When he saw no one was around, he picked up a baseball bat and smashed it on the vending machine. Suddenly, a scream startled Komoro. He rushed out. Ray was held by a man with a knife to her neck. In a world where zombies are rampant, the man only wanted to have fun while he was still alive. And so Ray, with her good looks, became his target. The man threatened Komoro to drop his weapon and give him the motorcycle with a full tank of gas. Helpless, Komoro had to comply. However, when he threw the iron rod, the sound of the impact with the ground attracted a large number of zombies. After filling up the fuel, the man told Komoro to get lost. At that moment, Komoro seized the opportunity and shot the man in the chest. The man was knocked to the ground. The intense pain made the man whimper continuously. Ray wanted to teach him a lesson, but Komoro urged her to leave quickly because the noise had already attracted a large number of zombies. The injured man asked for help from Komoro, but Komoro just looked at him contemptuously and turned around, riding away on his motorcycle. By that point, the man was surrounded by zombies and his fate was already sealed. At that moment, a female zombie was showing off, but she was shot in the head the next moment. A purple-haired beauty with a sniper rifle took down a zombie with one shot. In a short while, all the zombies in the airport were eliminated. This fierce woman was named Rika, the ace sniper of the special assault team, and now she is in charge of airport security. She was also a good friend of the school nurse, Shizuka. On this side, Saya and the others drove to the city. But the situation here is not good either. Some street thugs were acting recklessly, wielding weapons and attacking both zombies and uninfected humans. If it weren't for quick evasion, Koro and Ray would have been killed by them. Additionally, many uninfected civilians fled to the outskirts of the city to avoid the zombies. The places they chose were usually independent islands or areas with strong armed forces, but contact with others also meant the risk of zombie invasion. As time passed, these areas only maintained the minimum population to survive and refused entry to outsiders. The zombies were rampant, and screams could be heard all over. All the survivors wanted to escape, but they were all trapped on the bridge. The police prohibited civilians from leaving the area, and some hoodlums who didn't listen tried to force their way out. But the next moment, they were washed away from the bridge by a high-pressure water gun. Inside the bus, Wisteria was brainwashing the crowd. Even some of the female students were willing to let him manipulate them. As he continued to push people, more and more people have developed a morbid admiration for him. In order to avoid being influenced by Wisteria and to fulfill the promise with Komoro, Saya and the others were preparing to get off the bus and leave. The other people on the bus were angry at their behavior, but Wisteria did not stop them. To him, these people were already a destabilizing factor, so it was a good thing that they left. However, Wisteria did not allow Shizuka to leave. As the only doctor here, her role was more important than anyone else's. Just as Wisteria was getting closer, a bullet grazed his cheek. Hirano raised his modified gun and pointed it at Wisteria. Hirano, 
who had been timid and weak, had gone completely insane. Now, as long as someone dared to stop him, he would not hesitate to kill them. Wisteria was intimidated by this ferocity. The group left the bus without any issues. Meanwhile, Koro and Ray were planning to go to the East District Police Station, but the bridge was blocked and they couldn't pass. Suddenly, they heard the sound of fighting. It turns out that Saya and the others encountered a group of zombies after getting off the bus. Hirano had run out of bullets in his modified gun, and Siko was fiercely fighting with the zombies. Shizuka panicked and accidentally pinned Saya to the ground. The zombie group is approaching them. At the critical moment, Koro descended from the sky on his motorcycle. As soon as he landed, he defeated a large number of zombies. Rei joined the battle and killed many zombies with her spear. Koro threw his pistol at Hirano, who showed an excited expression when he caught it and immediately shot through the zombies. Koro kept moving forward and Siko grabbed his hand. With a powerful swing, an arc was drawn in the air, and the last zombie was eliminated. Crisis solved. Everyone was relieved. They gathered under the bridge to discuss how to cross the river. The road was blocked, and the water level was rising, making it impossible to swim across. Just as everyone was concerned, Shizuka suddenly suggested taking a break. Her friend's house was located nearby. Naturally, this friend is the fierce Rika with a sniper rifle. Before leaving, Rika gave Shizuka the key and asked her to help ventilate the room. Now, it could provide supplies for everyone, and Rika also had a large jeep, which was the best means of transportation to escape from the zombies. Everyone agreed happily, and Koro decided to go with Shizuka to check it out first. It was the second day after the outbreak of the zombie virus, which had spread like wildfire across the world, leaving governments powerless to contain it. The police and military could only temporarily block off infected areas and ban zombies and the injured from passing through. The sea was the only safe place. The top brass from all countries gathered here. To maintain stability in the overall situation, they have completely abandoned the areas that were infected by the zombie virus. These areas lack support or supplies. This also implies that those citizens will eventually pass away. This decision caused a lot of dissatisfaction and people began to protest, suspecting that the virus was a biological weapon developed by certain countries. The riots became more and more violent. In the end, some people even lost their minds. The police attempted to intervene, but it only worsened the situation, and they were forced to shoot the protesters to stop the violence. Meanwhile, Koro and his team arrived at Rika's house. As a top sniper in the special forces, she must have a collection of weapons in her home. So the boys searched for guns in the room. The girls went to take a shower together. At that moment, Hirano found a lot of bullets. With the combined efforts of both, the two of them opened a cabinet that was locked. There were many firearms in the cabinet. At the moment when he saw these guns, Hirano's face was filled with a crazed expression. As a huge military fan, these guns in front of him have a fatal attraction to him. All types of weapons are readily available here. As an ordinary high school student, Hirano knew all these guns like the back of his hand. Koro was puzzled. Through conversation, he learned that he had not only fired real guns before but also received training from a special forces captain for a month. Having a team member with rich military experience was crucial in handling the zombie crisis. The outside was chaotic and they noticed the dire state of affairs. The footage of the police shooting protesters was captured by journalists and the world was now beyond saving. If they wanted to survive, they had to rely on themselves. At that moment, Shizuka suddenly appeared after taking a shower. She was already drunk and jumped at them. When Hirano went outside to inspect, he suddenly started bleeding from his nose. It seems that Shizuka's behavior has had a significant impact on him just now. Rei and Komoro chatted about their past on the stairs, reminiscing about their childhood. On the bridge, many refugees had gathered, unable to leave as the roads were blocked. The government's abandonment and fear of death. It caused some people to lose their minds. They drove their forklifts over the guardrail and charged towards the zombie group. The riots began. People fled to the outside of the city in a hurry. Looking down at the hordes of zombies, Komoro realizes that the real test has just begun. A man in the street accidentally drops a bullet while loading it. Just as he was about to pick them up, a swarm of zombies pounced on him. The sound of screams echoed. Siko called Komoro and the others inside the house and turned off the lights. Although zombies were only attracted by sound, light could attract survivors, fear of death could drive them more insane than zombies. Siko warned Komoro not to show too much kindness in the future, as it would only lead to their own demise. Just then, 
Kouro saw a father with his daughter running toward a house. The father comforted his daughter and said they would soon see her mother. Then he knocked on the door of the house. He hoped that the person inside would let them in. However, the people inside the house ignored their father and daughter outside. Even if the man asked only for his daughter to go in, he was mercilessly refused. The man raised a wrench and threatened the people inside that if they didn't open the door, they would force their way in. Finally the man inside the house compromised. However, the moment the door opened, the man was stabbed in the chest with a sharp knife. The daughter behind the door looked at the scene in disbelief. The man gently stroked his daughter's head and told her he was okay, asking her to find a place to hide. Before he could finish his sentence, he closed his eyes forever. The girl cried out in grief and clutched her father's lifeless body. Her cries attracted the surrounding zombies. Just as the zombie was about to bite the girl, Hirano shot him on the balcony just in time to kill him. One by one, the surrounding zombies were eliminated. Komuro, who had witnessed all of this, decided to save the girl. After a discussion, Siko and Rei finally agreed to do so. Komuro rode his motorcycle towards the zombie horde, with Hirano providing cover fire from the balcony. So there was no obstruction. However, when he entered the courtyard, the bike overturned because it crushed a corpse. But there was no major issue. Looking at the girl surrounded by the zombies, Komuro charged into the zombie horde with an iron rod, knocking down more and more zombies. Just then, another zombie charged towards him from behind. After being alerted by the little girl, Komuro quickly drew his gun and shot the zombie in the mouth, instantly killing it. After eliminating all the zombies in the courtyard and bidding farewell to the little girl's father, they prepared to escape from here. However, the outside was already surrounded by countless zombies, making it impossible to leave. Komuro suddenly had an idea and carried the little girl on his back, leaving through the wall. Despite the zombies under the fence howling and roaring, but after all, they don't have human minds and can't bite the people above them. As long as Komuro doesn't fall off the wall, he will be okay. But at that moment, the little girl suddenly said she wanted to use the restroom. She couldn't hold back any longer. Komuro had no choice but to let her relieve herself on him. On the other hand, Hirano and the others were armed and ready to rescue. Shizuka drove a jeep and rammed through numerous zombies, while Hirano provided cover fire. A few big balls were weighing him down. Siko got out of the car and killed the zombies in front of her. Finally, Komuro and the little girl successfully jumped onto the roof of the jeep, and Shizuka quickly drove away, and so they managed to escape. But in this post-apocalyptic world, only one day has passed. They had to find a way to cross the river and meet up with their families. After a night of driving, Komuro and his group finally managed to escape the zombie horde in the city. With the car's amphibious capabilities, they successfully crossed the river and arrived on the other side. Before leaving, Shizuka brought out a lot of clothes from the room and the girls changed into them. Hirano and Komuro patrolled the road and found no zombies, so they signaled for Shizuka to drive up. Saya's house was the closest to here. So, they decided to search for her parents first. On the way, cherry blossoms were fluttering in the sky. Blue sky, white clouds, and a fresh breeze. Komuro and Rei sat on the roof of the car and watched everything quietly. Just then, Hirano shouted that there were zombies ahead. Saya immediately told Shizuka to turn right. However, when the car turned around, it was still surrounded by a group of zombies. Suddenly, Ray on the roof of the car shouted stop the car. There is a wire barrier in front of the car. Shizuka immediately turned the car around. The car kept moving forward. In a panic, Shizuka stepped on the brakes. But this caused Ray on the roof of the car to be thrown out and surrounded by zombies. Komuro jumped out of the car with a shotgun. Since he didn't know how to use it, he didn't hit very well. But it didn't take long for the gun to run out of bullets. As he was changing the bullets, they all fell to the ground due to a slip of his hand. At that moment, he remembered that Ray had a sniper rifle on him. Komuro climbed on top of Ray and began shooting zombies with the sniper rifle. Unfortunately, the car stalled and the engine wouldn't start. Saya had to get out of the car and grab a gun to fight. The group fought fiercely throughout the day and eventually ran out of ammunition. To save their companions, Komuro and Siko charged out of the zombie horde, hoping to lure the zombies over with sound so that the others could escape. However, there were simply too many zombies, and they couldn't lure all of them over. Realizing they couldn't escape, Hirano considered throwing the little girl outside the steel wire fence, but the girl declined. When her father was dying, he had the same expression as Hirano. Just as Hirano was about to throw her over, a group of heavily armed men appeared out of nowhere. 
they were equipped with special weapons and repelled all the zombies. At the same time, they rescued trapped people. As Shizuka was thanking them, the person in front of them removed their mask. It was Saya's mother. Saya ran over excitedly and saw that everyone was safe. So Kouro breathed a sigh of relief. But the situation on their side was terrible. Kouro decided to return to the other side and find a way to meet up with the others. Kouro and Siko finally arrived at Saya's house after breaking out of the zombie group and overcoming many obstacles. The location offered a strategic advantage due to its terrain and strong defenses, and many survivors sought refuge there. It was a rare moment of relaxation for everyone. Just then, a rescue team returned. The leader was named Juchiro. He is Saya's father. He is also the top commander here. Next, a zombie in a cage was transported by forklift to the crowd. He is Juchiro's best friend. However, he was bitten by a zombie to save his companion during today's operation. Juchiro praised his friend's spirit of sacrifice, but also stated that he considered zombies that posed a threat to human life to be unworthy of survival. Then, Juchiro cut off his best friend's head with his own hands in front of everyone's eyes. Juchiro told the survivors that the world had changed greatly and that if they wanted to survive, they must fight. Even close family members must be killed without hesitation. Despite this, these people were still living in the past, comfortable lifestyles, and refused to face the reality of the situation. Seeing that the survivors did not respond to his warning, Chuchiro left without hesitation. The end of the world is approaching and he won't be able to save everyone. If they don't have that kind of awareness, they deserve to die as well. At the refuge camp, Saya is still trying to convince these people. This group has been protected from the start. They had never seen the world outside occupied by zombies, so they didn't believe and didn't want to believe. As for Juchiro's act of killing his best friend. In this group's opinion, he was trying to force them into submission through violence. They didn't listen to Komoro and Saya's words. They believed that the zombies outside were just people infected with a new virus. Their ignorance makes Komoro and Saya helpless. From the current situation, it seems that this group of stubborn people will end up very badly in the future. As they had expected, that arrogant woman met a gruesome end not long after. Meanwhile, Chuchiro and Siko were seated opposite each other. When Chuchiro was young, he was taught sword fighting by Siko's father. Now he was happy to see his daughter so good. As a token of gratitude for her father's kindness, Chuchiro gave Siko a precious samurai sword. A bus pulled up outside the house. At the signal of wisteria, the schoolgirls lured the guards into letting them in. At that moment, Ray suddenly grabbed his bayonet and rushed out. It turned out that Wisteria had arrived, and from the words of those present, it seemed that he was the son of a member of parliament and held a high position. The man praised his father for raising a good son, but Wisteria sneered at his words, revealing that his father was actually a tyrannical ruler who had driven his mother to suicide. He claimed that he was just a pawn in his father's hands and that his father had even used him to teach the daughter of a police officer a lesson by making her repeat a grade as a warning. The policeman's daughter was Ray. While Wisteria was hypocritically talking about how she was protecting the students, Ray rushed forward and placed the bayonet in front of him. The thought of her father, who had never wavered in his beliefs, apologizing to Wisteria made her seethe with anger and wish to kill him. Wisteria tempted Ray to attack him, hoping to fulfill his twisted desires by sacrificing himself and driving her to the brink of despair. However, Ray decided not to kill him as she didn't want to tarnish her hands. Ray's words made Wisteria feel insulted. Finally Juchiro ordered, Wisteria needs to get out of here, along with the students he taught to be bad. Inside a military vessel in the depths of the ocean, soldiers received final orders from their superiors to launch nuclear missiles at various countries. With a key turn, humanity's forbidden weapon has resurfaced once again. The outbreak of the zombie virus and the nuclear strike. As if an invisible hand is controlling everything, a conspiracy seemed to be developing, and to prevent the nuclear bombs from falling, countries simultaneously conducted intercepts and successfully destroyed their targets. But there was still one nuclear bomb still headed for the target. At this time, everyone on the warship responsible for intercepting the nuclear bomb was turned into a zombie. The nuclear bomb eventually exploded. The sky above the city. A blinding white light enveloped the entire land. All electronic devices were destroyed. The explosion of a nuclear warhead is catastrophic to electronic equipment. Biological virus combined with the destruction of human technology. In a way, the end of the world may be near. Wisteria, who was forcibly expelled by Chuchiro, 
suddenly encountered a problem with the engine, causing the brakes to fail. The bus collided with a roadblock set up to stop the zombies, and hordes of zombies poured in from the outside. Strong fear surged into their hearts, and those who were supposed to guard the shelter fled in terror. The zombie horde quickly breached the defenses and guards, biting and killing them. Chuchiro ordered a lockdown immediately, despite the gate being successfully closed. But as time went by, more and more zombies have gathered here. Under the pressure of a horde of zombies, the gate finally could end hold up the collapse. The disaster had begun. It Mama. In the shelter, screams filled the air as people frantically ran around, but their efforts were in vain. The previously arrogant woman who advocated pacifism picked up a kitchen knife and attacked the zombies in a fit of madness. She was eventually bitten to death by numerous zombies. On the other hand, Koro and Siko's group were fighting against the zombies. Unlike those who had never encountered zombies before, they showed no fear or panic. Under Komoro's leadership, they fought against the zombies with no apparent pressure. At that point, the villa had already been overrun and Juchiro gathered everyone to break through the zombie horde in search of other shelters. He entrusted his daughter, Saya, to Hirano and told him to protect her at all costs. Previously, Koro stated that he wanted to search for the families of his companions. So he wouldn't go with Chuchiro. Saya wanted to object, but her mother smacked her, reminding her that they both had their own responsibilities and could not take care of her together. Understanding her parents' intentions, Saya tearfully left. Due to the nuclear explosion, all vehicles were unable to operate and had to be modified and adjusted. So they had to wait until the jeep was finished. At that moment, Chuchiro ordered the bomb to be dropped. The loud roar also attracted numerous zombies to approach. The guards kept firing. The couple even rushed straight to the zombie group. After a fierce battle, the jeep was finally modified and ready to go. They wanted to invite the mechanic to come with them, but he declined, stating that his friends were all here, and he did not want to leave them. After bidding farewell, the mechanic picked up a wrench and began to fight the zombies as the jeep drove away, wondering if they would ever see each other again. Due to a bus collision with a roadblock earlier, the intersection was extremely narrow and normal vehicles were unable to pass. Due to her exceptional driving skills, Shizuka was able to tilt the jeep at a 60-degree angle and pass through the narrow intersection. Continuing to drive ahead, the battle was far from over. The future holds a bigger challenge for them all. The name of this anime is Gakuen Mokashiroku. This episode of the video is the last episode of this anime, and there will be no more episodes. Unfortunately, the author of this anime passed away due to illness, which is very regrettable. For this anime, we can remember and commemorate the author by reviewing and enjoying it. At the same time, we can share and communicate with more people to let them know and appreciate this anime. Thank you for watching, and we hope to see you in the next video. Shoot, stop!